another recap on a Derry City performance. Um, again, a disappointing defeat, um, but an improvement to what we saw against Longford. Um, I thought first half started pretty well, um, pretty scrappy opening 15 20 minutes, but Derry started to grow in the game. Couple of half chances, um, which we didn't take, and first chance water forgot. Um, they scored with a fantastic free kick from Shane Griffin, but Derry probably could have done better. Um, they gave the ball away in the age own box and then gave away a free kick in a dangerous position. But they they responded well, um, had a few chances again, and scored right on half time through Cameron McJanet when he turned home at the back post after Will Patchens. A uh, free kick had been flicked on by centre half partner Owen Toll. Um, Derry came out, started the second half brightly. Um, Will Fitzgerald had a header, it went wide, but again, Derry were the masters of their own downfall. Um, a mistake by McJanet as he tried to back header the ball back to Gertzide. Um was short, and Gertzide, um hesitated and ended up flying in the attack on giving away a penalty. Um, he kind of half made up for it by saving the penalty um, but unfortunately uh, he could only parry it back to Oscar Brennan who, who tapped home um, after that Derry had a couple of chances themselves um, nothing there was a couple of great chances for Will Patch and he fired over from 12 yards Lepano had one tipped on the bar by by um, Brian Murphy um, on another day we could have won the game um but look, it's disappointing. Um, I felt that we lacked a wee bit of creativity, especially in the final third. Day. I thought it was it was pretty much um, desperation stuff. Even when Oscar Brennan got sent off for Waterford, we didn't we didn't do enough to try and get anything out of the game. Um, we need creativity in the final third. We don't seem to have it. Um, the creative men, Patson and Fitzgerald, seem to be getting on the ball in um, deep areas. Um, instead of high up the pitch where where they can affect the game um, two defeats out of two pressure was on Derry after the defeat to Longford it's on them even more now after a second defeat to Waterford it doesn't get any easier next two matches is um, St Pat's and Shamrock Rovers um, so there's going to need to be a, a huge response in them two games um, from this Derry team um, because um it's just it hasn't been a good season. It hasn't been a good start this season. Um, but need to really start to get points on the board earlier. It could be a long season. Thanks. And so at long last, the Blues finally have their first win. And uh, yeah, and I think that uh, sums up how we're going to get a lot of our wins this season. It was very workmanlike. Probably not great to watch from a neutral perspective. Uh, definitely very nerve wracking in the last ten minutes, uh, being down to ten men, which is very unfortunate. We are going to miss Oscar, Oscar Brennan in the next game, but, um, you know, look, he scored the penalty, so I won't be too harsh on him. Um, I think it's um, uh, very nice to see them defend so well. I know they did give up the goal that uh, they probably shouldn't have on the stroke of half time, but I thought that David Parkhouse and James Akintunde had two very good forwards that I didn't get much of a look in today, to be honest. And, um, you know, I thought... That if we defend, I think if we defend like that, you know, we'll definitely pick up a lot more points. It seems like the team is starting to come together. I do wish we could be a little more um, cohesive going forward because uh, we seem to lump the ball up the field a lot, even when we didn't need to. That being said, uh, I can't be too disappointed. A win is a win, and especially at the Brandywell, it's always a tough place to go. We usually never do well there, and to get the win is something else. It's another tough game in Ulster uh, next week away to Finn Harps, but uh, I think that if we play as well as we did this week and we work as hard as we did this week, then we'll definitely get at least a point out of it. So yeah, things are starting to look up. I won't uh, get carried away just yet, but uh, if we play as well as that, then hopefully uh, we should be able to stay up. So happy enough with that this week. Hi everyone, Daz here from Bohemian FC fan group. Match reaction to our 1-0 loss against Pats. You know, this was a game that I was hoping maybe we could try and get three points in. Our first win of the season. It's, it was never going to be easy against the pass. Let's be real about it. They're a good team. They've recruited well and they played very well yesterday. And Chris Forrester played really, really well. Um, for the first half, I think we did okay. We didn't press from the front. We let them have the ball. We let them play out. 
and once they start moving up the field, it did cause a bit of problems. Talbot didn't really have anything to do with the first half. Um, you know, they didn't really trouble us too much. So it was ours to try and go and nick, and we didn't do. Um, we think we could have utilised our free kicks and set pieces a bit more, and we didn't. Ultimately, we conceded from a set piece, which is never good to see. Uh, Pats got the one goal, and they got the win, and we're still seeking a win. I think it's terrible that we don't see Harry still. I don't know what the story there is. He must be injured. He must be hurt. He must be unfit, but he's not there, and he, you know, he should be playing, and he's not. And he was our kind of our luxury signing, if you will. And disappointing not seeing come on, and you know, leaving it so late to bring on subs again to try and change the game. You know, we're doing going one way, long ball up to Kelly, and then he knocks it on. He's feeding on scraps. There's no one there picking it up. With Bali missing the pace and the wings, like Twilight and Grand are always going to be too hard to replace. They're always going to be very hard to replace. And we're really missing that this season. And you can really see it in the first few games that we played that we're really missing that. There's no plan B. We keep going on with Kelly. He's doing his best up front. But there's no one there to help him out. Hopefully, when Malik comes back, he'll make a bit of a difference. But there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. We're not passing it around the midfield enough. and um, We did move to a forward to back there. I thought it made a bit of a difference, but not too much. We need to start passing it around more in midfield. We need to start crossing into the box more. And we put someone in front up beside Kelly to give him more of an option. Um, look, Dundalk next, that, that's going to be very, very hard. You know, they're all going to be hard games, but we're fighting for points now. And we're not where we want to be. Well, lads, Pat's won, bows nil. Uh, I tell you, my park, absolutely chuffed. Couldn't couldn't wish for, for a better Saturday football. Um, Ronan Cochran with the goal. First time we've won against Bowles in nine games. Um, I think across across the park, Pats were, Pats were solid, really good. Back four, and my back five, even the goalkeeper included in that, very, very good. Um, really positive stuff going forward as well. Um, not going to create a lot of chances, but took the chance when it did come. Overall, delighted with the start of the season we've had. We kick on now, uh, go go to the next one. I think it's Derry, Derry at home. Um, go to the next one. Need to beat Derry and Richmond. Need to make Richmond back in, back into the fortress that it was a few years ago. And hopefully Ronan will kick on and grab another couple against against Derry. Um, I thought today in particular, Lee Dan was really, really good. Um, personally, he would have been my man of the match. Um, it, great, great to see Dara Burns get a start. I thought Jamie Lennon was brilliant again. Um, Benson just brings so much energy to the midfield. But the, the, the boys look really, really fit. And... I'm re I'm don't want to don't want to big it up too much. I know it's bows are bows are on a bit of a bad run and they didn't look uh, as good as what they probably will be at the end of the season. But delighted, really positive stuff. Kick on, go to the next one, get another three points, and hopefully we can push all the way for Europe anyway. If not a league title, but I hope this video doesn't come back to haunt me next week. But yeah, happy Easter, lads. Absolutely delighted. Can't wait to the next one. Go on, Saints. Hello, everyone. Jake Davis here. Um, Draw United 1, Finhas 1. <clears throat> uh, fair stuff for Draw there. Um, first half, we had a lack of quality in all aspects of the pitch. You know, we were pretty poor everywhere on the pitch, really. Um, <clears> Top <throat> Ronald Murray and Huey Douglas. What well, what at their best today? You know, I think Ronald Murray... Just didn't play well at all in, in, in the midfield. Um, you know, we came in there alongside Mark Doyle in a, in a forward back formation, which we all thought he could do he could do well today against Van Half. We know he what well, you know, we all know the quality Ronald Murray, but unfortunately it just didn't happen today. Huey Duck as well, you know, Alan Foley, brilliant striker there for Van Half. You know, he's been doing that against Dundalk and and Bowes. Um he gave Douglas a lot of nightmares there today, especially not just him, but Massey and O'Reilly in the in the back three. You know, I thought Jerry Douglas was kept getting in position loads of times down the first half. Second half, it was well better. I know. I think after we conceded that goal there to Carlos Sullivan, and then after we conceded, we got scored there from from Mark Doyle. You know, we got more attacking the ball. We started looking more confident. Um, some some interesting stuff like that there. I, I for the back, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I thought the last game, the last two games we played for the back, I think we, we looked quite more comfortable there with the likes of Massey and O'Reilly at the back. You know, I think. Um, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, I just wasn't a big fan of that today. But you know what we do. Um, no, good. Some, you know, I mean, it's a fair result. You know, I think 
if Ben, you know, lose and say, oh, I thought we could actually get the win in the last maybe 15, 20 minutes after we, we scored the equaliser, we seem to be more attacking in the game. But, um, so look, big game now against Longford next week. We all know how Longford are. They've been very impressive now this season with the wins over Derry and the draws over Bowles. And obviously, they're unfortunate to lose yesterday to, Slo- to Sligo. So, um, yeah, looking forward to next Saturday. And it's full time in the head in the game park. Draw United 1, Van Harps 1. A real very entertaining match between the two sides. Um, possession stats kind of equal enough um, the first half. A uh, number of chances for both sides. Nothing really clear cut apart from a few uh, shots on David Adamusu and Mark McGinley. Uh, Harps with the bulk of possession and the bulk of the corner kicks throughout the get match. Um, but they could not make their chances count in the first half. Uh, second half got underway. Uh, very much like this first half. Very slow a lot of aerial battles between the two sides. Um, it just it didn't take until about fifty second minute when Harps hit the front. Um, a throw in from David Webster was headed out by Denny Corcoran. Um, hit it back into the box by Ethan Boyle and back out, and it was a half volley from Carlos Alvin, and it nestled into the bottom right corner of David Adamusu's net. A uh, great great strike, um, and Harps were hoping to capitalise on that there and build on that lead, but they were pegged back straight away. Sixty one minutes in the clock. Ball clipped over the top by Ronan Murray and it was hit across the box by James Brown. That was very, very um, impressive in the match. And Mark Doyle was there. Simple tap and, tap and finish um, to, to make it one all. Uh, both teams impressed um, for a winner. Um, very, you know, a lot of chances, a lot of balls in the box. Harps defended very well and Rotter were able to snuff out any danger that Harps caused. A few late chances for Sean Boyd, Mark Coyle, um, Cara Sullivan for the Harps, for the Harps, um, and also a few chances for Danny Corcoran. Uh, but overall, I think it was a fair result um, for both sides. Harps will be pretty happy. Seven points from nine, top the league on goal difference. Ollie Oregon would snap your hand off for that position on the table three games in. So move on to Waterford next week, and yeah, up the Harps. Uh, a pretty fascinating game in the uh, draw hutter tonight. Um, I thought the results was uh, very fair at one all. Uh, with a, a clinker of a goal there from Carlo Sullivan. Who, um, uh, there was a beautiful ping from twenty yards. Uh, you know, you'll you'll go far to find a better goal now this month. Uh, draw hutter probably deserved their equaliser. Um, there's, you know, there, there can be complaints from both sides about refereeing. Um, don't think Adriano Real covered himself in glory tonight, but uh, all in a fair result. Um, Draw had proven that they have added experience to the to the ranks there. Uh, they've they've a good side built this year. Uh, Harps proven again that uh, you know the 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 two two first results weren't any flash in the pan. That that was a that was a good competitive game it wasn't exactly for the football purists at times but a good competitive game between two good uh, sides with uh, plenty of experience and guile in them um, I, you know both sides will surprise people this year draw will be hard to beat in uh, head in the game park and um, that's all overall it was a very fair result and uh, both teams will go marching on